Hi guys, we're getting back to a little more work on our one ton XJ project and we're working on our Dana 60 front axle. We're using an uh, 05 and up Dana 60 front axle. Kind of show you a little bit about that right here. We've got a friend, Jeff Went. He's with the Minnesota Four Wheel Drive Association. Thanks for coming. You bet. Um, just a plug for the Four Wheel Drive Association. They're awesome. They really help to get us a lot of trails in Minnesota. So anything you can do to, to become a member and pay attention to their stuff, they do a really good job. But we're gonna kind of go about some of the basics on this. You know, you look at one of these 05 and up Dana 60s, they're kind of a daunting project. You know, you look at this, you've got to cut all this stuff off, you've got to get all this stuff out of the way. It, it gets to be really overwhelming. Well, we're gonna try and find the easiest way to do this. Jeff's done it a bunch of times, and he's gonna give us some pointers on kind of where you start, what type of tools you want to use. Like, on this project, you know, how would you normally start a project like this? I would normally start by unbolting as much stuff as I possibly can. You go to the top of the spring tower and take the one bolt here and takes this bracket off and gets this bracket out of your way. Then I'll start with anything that unbolts and get it out of the way. After that, I will So take, you'd even go so far as to pull the knuckles I'd and the I'd take the knuckle and everything off just to get it, just because I like to work with the bare housing and if you have to move and tip and twist, yep. it's easier when you have a lighter weight housing rather than, yeah. these, these things weigh a lot. Then I will take after that and I take and start cutting and start trimming. The passenger side is always the easy side because there isn't much to do with the cast iron. When it comes over to the driver's side, there's this big conglomeration of cast stuff that they have into here. And I don't believe myself in cutting into the tube you, when you put your link mount in, you have to get into the axle tube. I do not believe in cutting through the axle tube like some other kits and other companies do. I try to stay outside of that. Yeah, because they're taking away some of that casting, so you get more ability to get to the mild steel tubing. To the tube, and then they, yeah. put, they put a truss in here, and with the, the room for these things, everything critical room in every inch is the inch. If it's extra space, it's wasted space. Yeah, that's true, so that's true. So you, you have to cut this piece out of here to just to get stuff out of the way. It's kind of, it's not as bad as it seems, but it, it, it's very time consuming and there is grinding and don't let it scare you. But there is a fair amount of work and there's a fair amount of grinding to the job. You're not, don't think it's gonna be easy. Because you're gonna have to cut some stuff off just simply to get access to cut other stuff and then come back and cut and grind again. Correct. Yeah. And keep, biggest thing to keep in mind, I learned when I did my first one is, as soon as you put heat to it with a plasma cutter or a torch, at that point in time, the steel gets harder. And once you cut it with that, then you can't use a saw. I like to use a porta band and a grinder, cutoff wheels, I've used plasma cutters, I've done every, every other which way. And whatever you have for tools, you can use. It just dictates how much time. One thing to be very careful of, as I know a guy who did this, he was heating this up with a torch to cut this off of here. There's a metal disc right here on top of here. And he got the grease hot enough inside there it blew off and it impacted him. It landed in his chest. He ended up going to the hospital and getting a piece removed from Oh his. man, that's a bad day. It's a really bad day. S simple project and now yeah, you're in the hospital. And now you're in the hospital, right? And he has, he has a piece of steel in his pocket and it looks like <laughs> a silver dollar with a big bend in it. Because when, when it comes shooting out of there, it comes shooting like a bullet. Glad he's okay. So don't, I don't put any heat to this cast iron bracket. Well, a lot of guys will use a sawzall with a carbide tip blade, and that's, that's a good way to do it. And I think we'll try and do, we're gonna use the porta band. That's kind of what we've determined to be our best bet. But we're gonna come in and we'll start by unbolting some of the stuff, getting the hoses, the brackets out of the way. But then we're gonna come in and where we can use the porta band, we, we'll use that. Some of this stuff, we're gonna use the plasma okay. cutter. Uh, possibly even the oxyacetylene torch, just depends on what we can get closer with. And this is really the area that scares most people away. This is why a lot of people choose a 99 to 04, just because they don't have to deal with this. But I know you've done it yeah. a bunch, and we should be able to find uh, a way to get that off of there pretty quick and pretty clean. I've also seen guys that take and they make their link bars and they go in and they utilize the factory mounts before. I've seen a few guys that do that. Oh, just connect your link right there. They, put, a big your link, they put like a big plate on here, and they have their link bars connected here. The part I don't like about that is you have this piece hanging down. Yeah, you lose a gr lot of ground you clearance. Lose ground clearance, and I, I have mine because I run a buggy and I'm dumb enough sometimes. I even have pieces of mine trimmed out, so I trim this notch out of mine so for ground clearance. 
Okay. On the bottom of the casting, because these axles, I believe the rating on these axles are 7,600 pounds of weight rating on the front, I believe it is. Well, you start picturing and, these guys that are have a snow plow on the front, they got the big diesel engine, there's a lot of force, and our buggies and our Jeeps just don't weigh anywhere near right. that. And if it weighs that much, then he's probably going on a diet or something else. <laughs> well. <laughs> Everybody's got to have some flaws, so. Okay, first of all, we're going to start by just cutting some of the big stuff out of the way with the plasma cutter. The plasma cutter we have here is not real happy, so we're going to try to sawzall with a carbide blade. Now we get to the fun side. This is the cast piece. This is where we use the porta band. And we make a cut going in here down this way. And then we cut crossways. And we cut half this back ear off. And then we come around to the bottom and we cut the other back, the ear off the bo bottom. It's kind of, it's very time consuming. I just got to be patient with it. As we're cutting into here, we cut the top here, and I spread that just enough where you can get the bushing out, so the bushing's out of your way, so you don't have to try cutting through your bushing. Piece of cake. Okay, now we've rotated the axle around and we're going to cut the bottom part of this link off that we got the majority of the top part cut off. Sometimes you got to make more than one cut just to get your angles and stuff because you can't get the portal band in to cut stuff. Beautiful cut. So we're going to side save a little much of the web as we can right here. We're going to make a cut going straight down in here and then continue shaving more off this, get rid of more of this mount. Like they always say, it's not the size of the tool, it's okay. how you use it. Don't hit your hand. Move your safety glasses. OK, 
Okay, from here on, you've about got the rest cleaning up with the grinder. It's kind of shitty, dirty work, but someone's got to do it. We have cut all the rest of the brackets off the axle. We have ground this all up. This is all set. The upper shock mount here, if you care to, you can cut off. This, this one is cut off on one side. We left the other side on to show you. Over here, this one is still on here. Some people like to take and put a weld on or bolt on shock tower on here or a some other accessory they don't have to be on there so you can cut these off if you care to depends upon what your liking is also you can take if you want to you can come underneath the bottom here and you can cut these webs out of this axle because you're trussing it on the top and welding more stuff on the top that's to your each individual liking if you're looking for that little bit of an advantage you can also cut this one out of here if you like to you know some people it's a manufacturer's choice or builder's choice there's a lot of Things you can do and you cannot do, we don't have issues with that. So it's to each particular person's liking to how they want to do it or how they not want to do it. We've got about four, four and a half hours total from start to finish into cutting this apart. So that's what gives you for time frame. So and we've done a few of them, so that's about how long it takes. And don't think it's going to go fast. It's not a clean job, but you'll have fun doing it. So... Um, Okay, watch for the next piece, and the next piece will be putting the truss on here and welding the truss on.